Welcome to the House of Truth. Today we're we've been ta- we've been talking about our series on health and healing. And we've talked we talked about we've we talked about um, things that make you un- things that are unclean and how that applies to health and healing and how does, how you know how, how being unclean associated with, with death and filth and thereby a disease and looked at various disease. But now we're going to look at how to become clean, how to become clean from how. What it takes to become clean once you've been once you've been become unclean from something. Now we're gonna look at this on a case by case. We're gonna look at this on a there's various things we're gonna look at each one to see what the process is. And we're gonna see how it deeply applies to us as well today. We're gonna start off here in Leviticus, in Leviticus chapter 12, verses 5 through 8. And if she, but if she bear a a, a maid child. Then she should be unclean two weeks, as in her separation, she'll continue the blood of her purifying three score and sixty days. When the days of purifying are fulfilled, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering under the under the under the tabernacle of the congregation for the, under the priest, who shall offer before the Lord, make an atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed of the blood, be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law of her that is born a male or female. If she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtle doves. When they say turtles, I mean turtle doves. They don't mean reptiles. And two young pigeons, that the one for the burnt offer, the other for the sin offer, the priest shall make an atonement for her and she shall be clean. Okay, so first thing I want you to notice, this is talking about after childbirth. after, 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 After bearing children. A child, just to wait. And again, we looked at this period. It's 40 days total for a man. If she gave, gave birth to a boy, if she gave birth to a girl, it's twice as long, 80, because again, girl, uh, girls are more complicated than men. Men have a starter kit. Girls have an entire people factory. So th- she needs longer to recover. But now, in, in cleaning this context means, means, that she can re-enter the temple, the temple of God. Okay. She cannot. She cannot enter it, perhaps beyond the court of the Gentiles, or at least not pa- perhaps not even past the gate that led to the court of the Gentiles up to this point. Okay, the doorway there, which we'll see in a moment. Why I say that, we'll we'll see. But but I want you to notice something about, about what it takes for her to be for her to be clean. The key element is she has to have a lamb. A lamb, a lamb that's totally a, 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 a burnt offering is one that's totally consumed. Some some offerings the priest eats, can eat part of them or whatever. This one, the whole thing's just totally burned, totally destroyed. Okay. And a young pigeon. And notice, and notice that for a sin offering. And notice, and notice what she brings to so the door of the congregation, the tab of, of the tabernacle of the tabernacle. So she can only go to the door, which is what I was saying. She can only go, she, that's as far as she's been able to go. She can't even go past the door, can't even go to the court of the Gentiles at this point, much less to the court of the women. Now he's gonna he, he's gonna make an offering for her, an atonement. And so it's the death of the lamb that brings her, it's that makes atonement for her. Atonement at one meant. You look at the word breaking pieces. Makes us at one with the Lord. We can go back into his presence. So now, at that point, uh, assuming, of course, assuming she, her husband, her husband's been circumcised, up, she can go back into the court of the Gentiles. I mean, the court of the women. She can go through the court of the Gentiles up to the court of the women, and that's as close as she can get to get can get to God's presence symbolically. Because the remember, the Ark of the Covenant between the Sherem in the Holy of Holies was the presence of God. So you. We I mean, know oh, God's everywhere. His presence in a special way there, and the closer you, so the closer you get to that, the closer you are, you know, the deeper you are under His presence. So she can now go back into the presence of God like she had before she became, before she gave birth, through the blood of the Lamb. And one other thing I want you to notice is, if she's poor, she can set, she brings two turtle doves because she can't afford a lamb, which means that other one, other bird. The other bird is a substitute for a lamb 
and it represents the lamb. Okay, so even if she's poor, she still the, her atonement still comes to the blood of the lamb. Uh, a bird's been substituted. Now we're gonna look at we're gonna look at how this applies. Now we're gonna look at this in action here, and see what this and see what this lamb and see how the, and see this lamb. And the significance of this lamb in Luke chapter 2, 22 to 25. When the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem, presented him to the Lord. As in the law, Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer sacrifices according to the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man named Simeon, the self same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Okay, notice that, first of all, I want you to notice, is this according to days of purification, we just read this. Her and Joseph were poor. They could not afford a lamb. Now, lamb, if you get full, if you get one at the, at the end of, the, as a full grown for a year, the, the lamb of the first year will cost you about, in today's money, around 200, well, when I got, when I, when I bought that was already butchered, was like $250, okay, so. Not sure the live animal would be less than that, of course, but still, it's you know it's not nothing, but it's not. But it's, 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 if you're if you're poor enough, you can't afford it. So it tells us that that that, that Joseph and Mary were in the poorest class. They didn't live off. They didn't live in a palace somewhere. And, and the him here's Messiah Jesus. They he he grew up in a palace somewhere. He grew up in a poor family in a rural village. Basically, the Galileans were the hillbillies. Were the hillbillies of the day. That's why they said their accent betrayed them in one place. And and, 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 and a small, if you ever been, if you ever been or seen, um, or seen a whatever a, a, a reproduction of their houses they lived in, he, he shared his room with you know maybe four, maybe all of him and his brother shared were all shared in one room. Okay. So, you know, very crowded, very small, very built, very small village uh, in a very poor area. Okay, so she, you know, so this is, so this is, that tells something about them, the fact they couldn't afford the lamb. Also, now I want you to notice this man here, Simeon, he's waiting for the consolation of Israel. What's the consolation of Israel? The Messiah. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. So let's see. Now we're gonna look at. Remember, the setting here is the is this, is this, is, this, is, this, is this her being cleansed. So she's at the door of the tap. She's at the door of the temple here, being clean, ready to be cleansed, so she can go into the temple. You know, get close to the presence of God, as the law commands. So we're gonna look. We're gonna continue on here in Luke chapter two. We're gonna go down the verses thirty through thirty-five. For my eyes have seen your, this is Simeon speaking, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which are prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. Joseph and his mother marvels things were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through your own soul also. That the thoughts of hearts, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Okay, so what about this consolation of Israel? Let's notice what he says about it. He, he's seen, he's seen Messiah, and he said that's his salvation. Yahshua literally means salvation of, of, of Yah, of, of God. The Lord's salvation, he's seen it now. And but notice this that this Messiah is prepared for the face of all people. Jew and Gentile alike, and notice, but 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 how he but, but how the Messiah, well, he is each one is a little different. He's a light to lighten the Gentiles. The Gentiles, by and large, have left off worshiping God, and some and some like Samaritans, maybe they don't know they worship God, but they don't know what they're doing. Okay, they're 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 in darkness, to various degrees. Because they, they were not given the Torah and so the, the Torah and so on and so forth. 
Israel didn't have a problem, but it's the glory of your people, Israel. Messiah is the glory of the people of Israel. He's the one that's going to bring about all the things that God promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It all comes through Messiah. And jo and Simeon, Simeon outside of, outside of you know, the angel witnessing Mary and Joseph, that was the first person to witness that Yeshua is Messiah. And it's in the setting of Mary, Mary being purified, being, being cleaned of her, uncleans, of her uncleanness from, from child, that's due to childbirth. And I'll notice that even though the angels show, they, they're shocked. The parents are shocked about this. I don't know, people just seem sort of dense in the Bible sometimes, but nonetheless, they're shocked. But notice what else he tells Mary. He tell, he tell, Simeon tells him, this child is set for the falling and rising of many in Israel. And it's true. The, God said, God, the father said in, Deuter in, Deuter said in Deuteronomy, I will raise up a, a prophet like unto Moses and those that, and the, and you must obey, and you must listen to him, and you must hear what he says and obey him. And whoever does not, I'll require it of him. Well, the fact is, the fact is, many in Israel fell because, because they rejected Messiah. And as a result, all the things in Deuteronomy, including events like the Holocaust, came upon them. Because God wasn't joking when he said he had required of them. And the rising again of many, well, today, many people in the land of Israel, Jews, in the land of Israel, it, 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 it's, it's, it's growing. It's like very, very many people are becoming believers in Israel. They're, they're rising again. In these days we speak of, which tells us we're towards the last days. One of the signs of being the, of, of the uh, tribulation approaching. Okay, they're rising again. In fact, the rabbis have complained about it's a problem, but they can't do much about it. Many of these people are third and fourth generation Israelis now. They're not local immigrants. They're not new immigrants who came from America and brought this with them. They're native-born ones. They're, they were there. Their grandparents were born. Their parents were born there. Their grandparents were born there, and maybe their great grandparents were born there in some cases. So and it's a sign to be spoken against. Well, that's definitely sure. That's definitely true. I mean, some 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 rabbis said, "Well, they won't even say the word Yeshua. They'll say Yeshu or Yesh or something." I mean, or that man. They'll refer to him as that man. They speak against him like he brought all this trouble on Israel. When the fact is. God said, if you do not listen to the one that uh, the prophet I raise up like unto Moses, I'll require it of you. But nonetheless, they speak against him like he's the problem. When in reality, they are the source of Jewish trouble. Because they told people, they turned people against him. And God did what he said he would do. Now, to continue on. A sword will pierce through your own soul also. What's that speaking of? It's speaking of her cruci the crucifixion. I mean, think about how terrible that how terrible that had to be for Mary. I mean, you know, I'm sure it's bad for his disciples and everyone else too, but a mother to watch her son be tortured, mocked, spit upon, laughed at. Um, crucified, you know, finally, finally, you know, finally, finally, and finally die. She was there at his death. How terrible that must have been for her, for a mother to watch her child go through all that. She did what she could for him. She was at the for the cross. The Bible tells us that with John, the only disciple that did that, that was there, the, or the only one of the apostles that was there. But a sword pierced through her soul without a doubt when Yeshua was crucified. And at the end, what is the purpose of that? That the thoughts of many hearts be revealed. 
people will talk about Jewish people will talk people during Messiah so talk about being Torah observant, whatever. But the truth is, if you don't, if you don't accept, if you don't accept the one God said we must obey, your the thoughts of your hearts are revealed, and you're not Torah observant at all. You've missed the entire point, and you're rejecting the counsel of God to your own hurt. So where you accept him, really, really accept, really, really, really accept, look at the scriptures, the law and the prophets, and realize you fulfill them and accept him, or you look, or you refuse to look at the law and the prophets, or you refuse to accept what they say and accept, and, and you reject him. It reveals your heart. Okay. So the, again, in the context of Jewish people, here, which is hearts of many hearts, but it's true about everyone else too. Everyone's hearts are going to be it, the, the thoughts of Gentiles as well. The thoughts of your heart are revealed by what you do with Jesus, Yeshua, Yahshua, if you want to use the Hebrew. So that so there's a lot packed into this simple this simple ceremony to heal uh, to cleanse a woman of uncleanness after giving childbirth. Now we're going to continue on looking. We're going to look at another so another, another some more some more cleaning, and this time it's about leprosy. And again, remember the word leprosy. Um, really doesn't necessarily mean Hodgkin's disease, what so we'll classically call leprosy, but can refer to um, a number of skin of uh, skin diseases that produce issues and can be, and can spread from one person to another. Okay, you know uh, well, issues. I mean, like issuing pus or something. Okay, so let's continue on here. We're going to look in Leviticus chapter. We're going to go to Le Leviticus now, chapter fourteen, verses one through three. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall go out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper. All right, first thing I want you to notice. When the law, when the when the leopard is clean, or blaze is clean, the, 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 the professional has to go to him. We talked about, we talked, I talked about. How to do the plague and what and, you know, leprosies are model because you know the Bible they spend the whole chapter on how to deal with leprosy. Well, how they with the Bible they spent, they wrote an individual chapter on every possible plague. It's ridiculous. It's it's a model, the spirit of the law, right? So the professional has to go out and do the examination outside the camp. And why? Well, not to bring the not to bring the plague into the camp is the obvious reason. And remember, in case in case the guy's not clean. And, you know, in this case, in the context of when they were there, God himself walked to the camp, so there could be no uncleanness in the camp, right? But also, just in a practical sense, so if he does, if he's not really well, you're not spreading it among people. Let's continue on. In Leviticus chapter 14, verses 4 through 7, then, the priest then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As to the living bird, he shall take take it in the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop, and shall dip them in the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. He shall sprinkle upon him that is clean from the leprosy seven times, and pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. All right, there's a lot packed into this. Let's take a look at these. So let's now remember the, these two birds. And remember, birds are symbolic of a lamb. But a lamb would be impractical or, or some, a substitute for a lamb in some cases, all right? So it's carrying the same ideal. And let's look what let's look at the look at the elements of this. Cedar wood, scarlet, and hyssop. The cedar wood, what's it remind us of? It reminds us, it, it, it's, it's a picture of the cross. The scarlet, not just the bloodshed on the cross, but also remember the robe the Messiah put on. Hyssop is a bitter herb. In fact, when it says bitter herb, the bitter herb in mind was hyssop that grew. And it's the same thing they painted the blood of the lamb around the doorpost, around the, the doorpost and the lentil, and the lentil of the door, around their doors, right? On, on Passover. Okay. 
So now notice this. He's the kill the birds be killed in a in a wood in an earthen vessel over running water. All right, so the birds, one of the birds is killed. Now it's inside an earthen vessel. Speaks of a burial, a tomb. Okay. Now he's dead inside the tomb. Over running water, Yeshua said, I have your belt, I remember being will come rivers of living water or running water. Running water means living water. So they're used interchangeably in the Bible because something's alive, it's moving. Okay. So let's not speak of it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, look at the other bird. He's going to he's going to dip them in. He's going to dip all these things into the blood of the bird that was killed. The blood was upon the cross, upon the scarlet robe, and the shedding of blood was bitter for Messiah. So, and then then what? And then the living bird. The that bird is alive, but the blood but the blood is on it. And it speaks of resurrection. Okay. And that resurrect and that resurrection, and that resurrection again, the blood that was killed, it's all the work of the Holy Spirit. Now he's gonna he's gonna sprinkle upon them. He's cleaned the leprosy seven times and rounds and clean. Seven, speaking of completion, complete cleaning by the blood. Now, living birds can be let loose in the open field. Of course, when he's let loose, he flies. He's ascendant, like Messiah ascended. And also, it speaks of that man being set free. He of the sun sets free is free indeed. Now we're gonna, now we're now we're gonna continue. We're going to continue on and, and, and see about this cleansing process because it's, it's not actually over. There's something more needs to be done. Leviticus 14, 8 through, 8 through 10. He has been cleansed, shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and wash himself in water and he may be clean. After you come to the camp and tarry abroad out of his camp tent seven days. And it shall be on the seventh day shall, he shall shave all the hair off his head and his beard and his eyebrows. Even all his hair he shall shave off shall wash his clothes and wash his flesh in the water, and he shall be clean. On the eighth day, he shall take two he lambs without blemish, one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish, three-tenths deal of fine flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil and one log of oil. Now again, seven days speaks to completion, okay? So when it's completed, so when that's completed, what does he do? He has to shave off all of his... There, even his eyebrows, and why? Final inspection to make sure. Remember, in, one, in some types of leprosy, you got to shave everywhere around it, see if it's spread, and you know, see everything except that. So see what. And so now you can totally be inspected, make sure you're really clean. Okay. And the eighth day speaks of a new beginning here, and notice he has to bring more sacrifices on this day of a new beginning, and they've changed. He's got to bring a total of three lambs now. And some fine flour with meat off with for a meat offering, mingled with oil. So that's again, and that's like matzah. That's like matzah flour. It's just flour and oil. There's no leaven. I want you to notice, and a log of oil. So again, without leaven, leaven's a picture of sin. Without sin. Let's continue on and look and see what the, what the priest has him do with this now in Leviticus chapter 14, 11 through 14, verses 11 through 14. And the priest that makes him clean shall present the man made clean, those things for the Lord, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall take one he lamb and offer him for a trespass offering, a log of oil, and wave him for a wave offering before the Lord. He shall slay the lamb. In the place where he kill, where he shall kill the sin offering and burnt offering in the holy place, for as a sin offering is the priest, so is the trespass offering. It is most holy. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear, whom that is be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. 
Okay, so notice again here that 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 the that one that, that one of the he lambs again has to be has to be sacrificed. The lamb has to die. Has to has to die in the holy place. You know, speaking of the whole, you know, speak. Then of course a picture of the holy place, in the holy place, the holy place in heaven. This one's on earth, but it's a picture of the lamb presenting it, the, the blood of the lamb being presented in the holy place in heaven. On the on the altar in heaven, because remember Moses said, everything he, when they told him about the tabernacle, see you make a, make the pattern after everything he saw on the mount. Okay. So there's a heavenly one and there's an earthly one. It's a representation of the heavenly one. And notice this, you're going to put this guy on, he's going to put this, he's going to, the blood has to go on the man. The blood has to be applied for him to be cleansed. There is no cleaning without the blood. But we're not done then. That, again, that blood, the blood of the lamb made him clean, but the blood of the lamb is not sufficient. And it's not, I mean, it's not all the man needs, I should say. It's sufficient to clean him to the degree, but it's not everything the man needs. We're going to look and see why not here in a moment. Levit, if we continue, Leviticus chapter 14, we're continuing it in verses 15 through 18. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil, pour it on the palm of his own hand, left hand. The priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, sprinkle the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And the rest of the oil is in his hand. Shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear and has to be cleansed, upon the thumb of his right hand, upon the great toe of his, of his right foot, upon the blood of the trespass offering, and the remnant of the oil is in the priest's hand, shall pour upon the head and has to be cleansed, and the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. Okay, so this oil is, represents the Holy Spirit. And notice, after he's cleansed, after he's after he's had the blood applied, he needs the he needs the oil applied as well. And again, where on the ear, what he hears, thumb, what he does, toe, where he goes. Okay, symbolic of where you know. So that he's now being led by the spirit, hears the spirit, and does the work of the spirit. Okay. And notice that he's, when he's done with that, he, he anoints the man. Mashiach means anointed one. And believers are anointed as well. We have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And if we don't have the Holy Spirit, or none of his, we cannot keep God's commandments without the spirit of commands, without the spirit of God. In Romans chapter 8, it, sa it, it says the carnal mind, the, the, the carnal mind, the mind without the spirit of God, is not subject to God's law, the Torah here, neither can it be. So, we can, if we do not have the Spirit of God, we're none of His. So, we also must have the Spirit upon us and in us to be made clean, to have an atonement, so we don't return to violating the law. Now, we're going to continue on Leviticus chapter 14. In verses, in verses 19 through 22. And the priest shall offer the sin offering and make an atonement for him to be cleansed from his uncleanness. And after he shall kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall offer the burnt offering, the meat offering upon the altar. And the priest shall make an atonement for him. He shall be clean. And if he be poor and cannot get so much, he shall take one lamp for a trespass already waved to make atonement for him, one tenth, tenth oil for an oil, meat offering and a log of oil. And two dirtle doves or two pigeons is able to get, and one shall be an sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. All right, now we took care of the one lamb. Now you might be thinking, where's he going to get these lambs? And he's been having leprosy, and he's all poor. Remember, we we talked we talked about how to deal with the plague. Part of God's instructions is his neighbors are to restore him. His neighbors are to help him, are to give him these things. It's not. Well, that's well, that's very that's very sad for him. Too, too so sad, too bad, so sad. You know, no, his neighbors are to help him. But suppose he's in a poor area, and his neighbors can't afford. You know, 
they can then then he they, the one lamb is mandatory the he lamb no for, without the shedding of the blood of the lamb there is no cleansing okay and these other ones again the when the when you do these birds they represent their their substitutes for a lamb representation of the, of the blood of the lamb for atonement for atonement as well okay and let's look and let's look and see what let's look and see what he does with these with these birds or lambs once he gets them well the meat offering means food offering and that's that oil and that's that oil mixed with flour the unleavened bread dough it's not matzah yet but when he throws it on the altar it's going to bake on there it's going to become matzah so again, remove a picture of removal of, of a life without sin. The sin's been removed. There is no there is no leaven, no sin. Because of the because remember that came after the oil. The, the blood took away the oil makes sure that well, the sin doesn't is helping you not going to sin again. But let's continue and see what see what all happens after this. And he shall bring them on the eighth. And then we're seeing on Leviticus chapter 14, verse 23 through 25. He shall bring them on the eighth day for his cleansing unto the priest, and on the door, under the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And the priest shall take the lamb of the burnt of the trespass offering, the log of oil, and the priest shall weigh them for a wave offering before the Lord. He shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and put it upon the right tip of him that is be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the toe of his right foot. You know, look at this strange thing. Now, now the priest, now the priest is going to kill a second lamb, kill the other lamb. Now, of course, we just saw if it, it could be a bird if the guy wouldn't, couldn't afford a second lamb. Okay, he's in substitute, he can substitute two birds. They represent the lambs, right? He's going to kill. He's going to kill this lamb. And going to put the blood upon him again to make and then notice it's the exact same process as the blood before and the oil before. And what does this speak of? It speaks of it speaks of somebody, a believer, who fell in the temptation, who fell in the temptation and comes back and now needs to be cleaned again. Not that Yeshua is going to make another sacrifice, but he's going to do what he said himself. He told us, Peter said to him, if a man sin against, if a man sin against me and say, I forget, and say, repent, how many times you forgive me? He said, and Peter thought seven times was like really stretching it. And Yeshua said, not seven, but 77 times. He would do, would he not do the same? Would he not do what he told us to do? So it's not that, so, so, so this is, speaks of someone who's, this speaks to somebody who's now, they, that blood is sufficient, not just for your sins you have to that point, but the ones that, the ones that you might fall into later. And again, I'm going to stress unintentionally, uh, unintentionally unplanned, I guess maybe I should say. Not a lifestyle of sin, but a, but a giving in the temptation. Kind of like when Peter uh, denied Yeshua three times, okay? <laughs> he gave him the momentary temptation, but it wasn't a lifestyle for him. So we're gonna continue on with that. So, the, so you got so now that same blood has to be applied again. Let's continue on in Leviticus 14. The blood of the lamb has to be applied again, and we're gonna in chapter 14. We're continuing on, and we're picking up in verse. We're continuing in verses 6, 26 to 29. Just pick up where we left off. And the priest shall pour the oil in the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oils in his left hand seven times before the Lord. The priest shall put the oils on his right hand, upon the right tip, upon the tip of the right ear, and be cleansed. Upon the thumb of his right hand, upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the place of the blood of the trespass offering, and the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand shall put upon the head and this be cleansed, and then make him an atonement before the Lord. Notice the exact same thing he did with the oil the first time. If you rededicate, you've got to be you need you, you need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. A fresh application. It's not, these things are not a one and done thing. 
a righteous man falls down seven times and gets up. The question isn't, the question isn't, is not, is what, trophies don't go to those who have good beginnings, okay? Nor do they go to those who are winning in the seventh inning. It's how you finish that matters, okay? So, so, the, so sometimes people make, sometimes people fall aside and they, either, they, 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 they need to be renewed. And this is what these, this, this is what this reapplying the blood and the oil speaks of. We're going to, we're going to wrap up Leviticus 14. 30 to 30 to 40, I mean, in verse 30 to 32, now, in, in about this law of cleansing the leper. He shall, and he shall offer one of the two turtle doves or one of the young pigeons, such as he can get, even as such as able to get, the one for the sin offering, the other for the burnt offering, with the meat offering. The priest shall make an atonement for this to be cleansed before the Lord. This is the law of him, of him in whom the plague is the plague of leprosy, whose hand is not able to get that which it pertains to his cleansing. Okay, so remember, remember the, these things. These things are in, in substitute for a lamb. So now he's done, and that pertains to his cleansing. And again, it's a picture not just of cleansing once, but of cleansing twice. As you see, anointing twice. A renewal. If you have fallen in, if you're a believer and you have fallen away from the Lord, you can come home. You can come back. Not that not, not mean if you reject him completely. But like Peter, you 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 fell a moment of temptation. The way is paid for you to come back. You can get a fresh application, get, get your sins, get your sins forgiven again. You can get a fresh anointing and be restored to where you were before. Now we're going to go, we're going to look at how Yeshua applied, applied this. It is Yeshua, Yeshua, if you prefer the Aramaic, Yeshua, Hebrew, Jesus, Greek. Jesus, he, English, whichever you prefer. Jesus, Spanish. By any other name, he is Messiah. And here it is. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. And he has come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be you clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, tell no man, but go your way, show to the priests, offer the gifts that Moses commanded for a testimony to them. So first of all, I want you to notice this leopard worshipped Yeshua, recognized he's Messiah. Calls him Lord. Same title that's used of, uh, that's used of the Father, by the way, okay? He's recognizing him. Yeshua cleansed him. His, the leprosy's cleansed, but he's not, is only physically clean. As we saw, remember the leper when he first went, when he first got clean, he could go now go into the camp and he, he wasn't quarantined anymore. So there's a, the restoration happens in phases. First it was physical, then it was social, and then then it was finally at the end was it was was was, bring, was was spiritual to bring him where he could go back to his place inside the congregation. Wherever where that this place was inside there is in the court of the Israelites, or the court of the Gentiles, or the court or the court of um, or, or, or perhaps he's a Levite or a priest, you know, whatever his position, whatever his place was, he can now be restored to that position. So Yeshua tells this man who's who's cleansed physically that he needs to go do these things. Wait, now we're gonna look at we're gonna look at we're gonna look at a little bit more another a little more details of this same guy in Ma in Mark chapter one verses forty through forty four. There came a leopard and besieged him and kneeling down him saying, "If you will, you can make me clean." And Jesus moved with compassion, 
put forth his hand and touched him and says to him, I will be you clean. As soon as he spoke, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. He charged him straight forth and sent him away and sent him away, saying to him, say nothing to any man, but go your way, show the priest, offer the cleansing, offer your cleansing, those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. So again, he's physically clean. But notice that Jesus had compassion on him. When we're not clean, not from a physical thing, but from sin, we, we, have a, we have a high priest who's touched with the weakness of our infirmities, who understands the weakness of, our, uh, 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 of, uh, of how we can fall into temptation. And he, has, and he has compassion to put forth his hand to restore us if we'll come to him and ask. And ask in humility like this man did. Notice kneeling down, humility, lowering himself, beseeching him. And you may feel like you're not worthy. None of us are worthy. That's the point. <laughs> if we were worthy, it wouldn't be grace. It wouldn't be mercy. God didn't owe us the chance to repent. He didn't owe us Messiah being sacrificed, dying on, dying on a cross for our, on our behalf. And notice again, this, and notice a, a testimony to these priests. Why? Because the testimony of what? That Yeshua is Messiah. Now, depending on what kind of leprosy you have, if you had, if you had like Hodgkin's disease, my bet is they didn't see very many, they didn't see very, they, 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 they never saw a case come back to them before Messiah. Well, I know of one case, and that's Naaman the Syrian, and he wasn't Israelite. He didn't go down to the priests to do this, you know. Back at back in the uh, back in the in the original covenant or the Old Testament, if you like, they like to call it. So, they, I mean, some of these things people could get clean from naturally, but some of these things, no, there was no cure. I mean, Hodgkin's disease can now be cured by a fifty cent, believe it, a fifty cent cure, believe it or not. Stop with the rest. Of course, it won't restore all the damage that's been done. But, but back then, it was just uncurable. And that spoke to them. They, they taught only Messiah could, could do this. It speaks. So this cleaning of leprosy, like the cleansing of sin, could only be done by Messiah. Well, we, look, we, we look again here in Luke chapter 17. 12 through 16, where he deals with another set of lepers. And look what, and look, and, and look what, and look how, how, how he did with them. As they entered a certain village, there met him 10 lepers, which stood afar off. They lifted their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw, saw them, he, when he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And it came to pass, they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God, fell on his face and his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So I want you to note, all right, notice here. He tells them again. And notice this time, things are di very different. Notice they stood afar off. The other guy came up to him, which he wasn't supposed to do. But they're actually doing what the law says. Not be close. In fact, the distance, they ruled on it. They said, well, how close, how far is far enough? They ruled two cubits, which is by the way, six feet. Okay. Hmm, watch your distance. Where have I heard that before? Anyways, that was that was in commandment with how to deal with the plague. Okay. And in, 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 in line with those commandments, they're lifting up their voices. They're crying out. Remember, says, wear a mask over your face. Oh, yeah, wear a mask. Hmm, dealing a plague. And cry. Unclean, unclean, if you know you've been tested positive. Okay. And what are they calling for? They're calling for mercy. Now, notice they have to have faith this time. They have to, have, they, 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 it requires faith from them. Faith is confidence that leads, in, that leads to action. Confidence in God's word that leads to action is, is biblical faith. Okay. So, they were not clean yet. As they, he wanted to go show themselves to the priest. That's what you did when you were clean. 
They weren't clean when he told them that. They were clean after they went and they started moving that way. Their, their action of faith completed it. And we talked about the foundation of healing, okay, before. There's several things involved. And this completed the completed. But notice that. that what, but one of them comes back and glorifies God. And this one's a Samaritan. Remember, we saw unto all people. What's a Samaritan? It's a Gentile. I'll go into detail on this in a future lesson, but it's a Gentile who lives in Israel, who worships the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but he doesn't know what he's doing, and he's doing it the wrong way. They have their own temple. <laughs> they, they have their own temple, not the temple, not, 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 not the temple in Jerusalem. They got their own rules. And they, and they were taught this by corrupt priests of Israel who were in the northern kingdom, who, who mixed idolatry with the worship of God. And, and you know, so they got idol, they got they got idolic practices as well as what God told God laws, God told told, them, told the Jews and the law God gave Moses. But Yeshua heals him, and like we talked about the Good Samaritan last week, we, 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 talk, we talked about the Good Samaritan was talking about. We talked. We talk, we talked about how to deal with a plague. Now the good Samaritan did what the commandments of the law actually said, and he's the one that's commended, even though he's, even though I mean, in the context of the day, the Samaritan, Samaritan of Israel might be kind of like it might be kind of like a Muslim who's worshiping God, but doesn't know what he's doing, and he's way off. But no, it's more like a lot of Christians today who are mixing in Easter and Easter and and worshiping on Sunday and generally don't know what they're doing, okay? But they're the ones that gave thanks. Notice the Jewish men didn't even like, meh, whatever, you know, huh? Gee, they didn't even bother to tell them thank you. Again, it, so this Gentile is the one that's gonna, is being commended here. Even though, he, even though he's worshiping God, the right God, in the wrong way. He's doing what he knows to do. And it's the same, and that will be, and that will be, to, and that's part, that's part of my next lesson, which we're going to look at about the day after the Sabbath. I'll go into more detail on that. But I just want you to notice that. Now we're going to continue on with, with some more cleansing of leprosy. There, 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 there's a, there's yet, there's yet something else. There's, remember, there are different types of things that could be get clear from leprosy. Not just the person. We looked at the person. But also, also, we could look, also, remember how clothing could get dirty, could get, could get contaminated, so could houses. And this is what we're looking at right now. This is the case about the house. And there's the process for the house. Fort. Leviticus chapter 14, verses 49 through 53. He shall take to cleanse the house two birds in cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. He shall kill one of the birds in the earthen vessel over running water. He shall take the clean wood, the cedar wood, the hyssop and the scarlet and the living bird, and dip them in the blood of the slain bird in the rain water and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, the rain water, the living bird, with the cedar wood and the hyssop and with the scarlet. You shall let the living bird go out of the sea in the open field, make an atonement for the house. It shall be clean. Notice it's the exact same process as it was for a woman after she gave birth. And in the, in, 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 uh, but, right. Yeah. In the Hebrew word, indeed, the Hebrew word for for daughter, bot, the, the letters in it literally mean sign of the house. Okay. The notice that so there's an association between houses and women. Okay, women are more concerned with how the house looks and so on and so forth than men. It's just the way it is. But the house also speaks of a man's of a man's what ancestry. So now that the same. The same blood, the same death, burial, the same blood on the wood, the bitterness that Messiah suffered, can and also apply to a house. Not meaning 
a physical structure like this lyric, like this was here. This a again a physical picture of a spiritual reality, like all these things. And the physical picture is absolutely true, but so is the spiritual reality. And this and in the house there, and we speak of somebody's house like the house of Tudor, that you know the people who are from that same white family of Tudor that ruled over England for so long. You know, or the house of you know, you know, we'll talk about someone's house. Mean you know that mean, mean they're just their family or, or maybe their descendants or whatever, right? And that same blood that can clean you from your sin can also break any generational curse. Because the generational curse is a thing in the Bible. God says he will, he says he will, in some cases, instead of killing the parents, in which case there would be no descendants, he'll lay the curse, he'll spread the curse out down to the third and fourth generation. Yes, your great grand, you could be having trouble because then your great grandparents, your great, yes, your great grandparents did. Or maybe even your great great grandparents, okay? But you can break that. And the Bible tells us how. You repent not just of your sin, but their sins as well. And the same, the same blood, the same Holy Spirit can cleanse you, can break that curse off your house. And now Leviticus chapter 14 wraps up with verses 47. 40, 54 through 57. This is the law of all manner of plague and skull, the purpose of a garment of a house, for the rising of a skull, for a rising for a scab and for its bright spot, to teach what is clean and what is unclean. This is the law of leprosy. Okay, so this so now we've been told now to clean leprosy completely every, in every case. And again, notice there's different skin conditions here, right? Remember, skin, leprosy didn't just mean one thing. It meant a variety of skin of communicable skin diseases with the major the major commonality being they got some sort of issue pus or whatever coming out okay and they could spread and they could be given to other people those are kind of characteristics right in a nutshell and now we know that the, 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 the same process that can clean a person that you can be cleansed of leprosy. That's not physically, but also restored in society. From and remember, leprosy is a picture of sin. Okay, you can be restored. You can be restored into the into the in, into the congregation, in society. You can be restored to your to, to, to your position with the Father. We are back in His presence in a special way, in a special way. Or you can enter it for the first time if you never have. By the blood of the lamb. Now we're going to look at another case, another, 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 cle another cleansing. We've talked about the woman who gave childbirth and leprosy, but now let's look at another one that we talked about. People who are unclean need to be cleansed of their uncleanness. Leviticus chapter 15, verses 13 through 15. And when he has an issue, is cleaned of his issue, he shall number himself seven days for his cleansing and wash his clothes and bathe him his flesh and running water, and it shall be clean. Shall be clean. On the eighth day, she'll take with him two turtle doves, two pigeons, come before the Lord into the congregation and offer them to the priest. The door of the tabernacle of the congregation, I'm sorry. The priest shall offer them in the sin of one, the, the, the one for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering. The priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord with his issue. Okay, here we go again. Now notice, cleanse of an issue, and that issue as we talked about, because it talks about where you sit and everything else, often refers to a venereal disease. It can be, it can, it can be something else, but that's what often, because it's particularly noticed and particularly stressed in that area, like where you sit down, okay? And what's down there, what's down there, you know, your, your, your bottom and your, and your genitals basically in the area between them. So, you know, so it's been, but you, it, so he's cleansed of this. And notice this process. Running water again, what well, speaks to the Holy Spirit? He's going to bathe. You, you've got to be washed in the, in the washed in the Word. The Word comes from the Spirit of God, right? The, so, you got to be washed in the Living Word. 
the spirit in the spirit of God, you need to be washed and cleaned. And feet and taking the and, and, and wash and bathing your flesh speaks of what baptism, okay? You so, so his clothes, if, you're, if, you, if you ever get baptized and you're wearing your clothes, they're wet too, right? So, com, and, and this is what completion seven days feet. on the eighth day, a new renewal. He comes, he brings these same two things. Remember, remember, birds are substitute for lambs, where lambs aren't practical for whatever reason, okay. So, and why? So the priest can make an atonement for him. And it's a, so it's the same. So he's, he, he, again, it speaks of Messiah. Now we're going to look at another, we're going to look at another case here in Leviticus 15, 25 through 28. If a woman has an issue of her blood, many days out of the time of separation, we run beyond, beyond the time of her separation. All the days of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. Every bed whereon she lies, all the days of her issue shall be under as the day as the bed of her separation. Whatsoever she sits on shall be unclean as the day of her separation. Whosoever touched those things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean the evening. But if she be cleansed of her issue, she shall number herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. Okay, so again, notice that now. She's been unclean. If it's just been a week, okay, fine. But if it's been longer, however long it takes, then she's got to wait another week, all right? And now, now she's clean physically. But she's clean physically, and I mean, she can resume relations with her husband. But she, can't she cannot go back into, the, back into the tabernacle or the, or the temple. And she cannot re go back to her place, her place in the presence of God, presuming she's a Jewish woman, like most of these would apply to. And she cannot and go into the court of the women, okay? Again, the cleansing is a multi step process. In Leviticus chapter, in Leviticus chapter 15, we continue on in verses 28 to 31. If she shall be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number herself seven days. But if she be cleansed of her issue, she shall number herself seven days. After that, she shall be clean. Okay. And on the eighth day, she shall take of her two turtle doves and two young pigeons and bring them unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer one for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering. The priest shall make an atonement for for before the Lord for the issue of her uncleanness. And you shall thus, thus you shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. They die not in their uncleanness, and they shall defile, and they defile my tabernacles among them. Okay, so I want you to I want you to notice this about this woman now. She on the eighth day, again, eighth day speaks of a new beginning. Again, two doves, which represent two pigeons. So, again, atonement. So now she can go, now she can re-enter and be where she was before, into the presence of God in a special way, close as she can get to the Holy of Holies, as far into the, press, the presence as she can press, okay? And notice uh, that they will die for their uncleanness. With uh, in the same way, we, we if they die not in their uncleanness, we have to be separated from our uncleanness. I'm talking about, I'm not, I'm about physical, I'm not the same. We have to be separated from our uncleanness of sin, or we will die in our sins. Okay. That tabernacle, remember, re represent the, of the, uh, the physical one represents the, the heavenly one. See what she's do it. Make it after the pattern you saw on the mount. Remember. We saw the heavenly one. We cannot enter into the heavenly tabernacle in heaven. We cannot enter heaven with sin. That we cannot defile that tabernacle. It's not defilable. God will not make God make sure of it. Okay. Down on earth, we're to make sure we don't defile his physical one. Now, there's consequences. But in heaven, there's no option. Okay. 
We, we cannot enter it into the kingdom of heaven with sin. We have to be cleansed. Now we're looking, we're going to look at this woman. We're, you know, we're looking at a case of this, of a woman who, who had to be cleansed of her, went way out of time here in Matthew chapter 9, 20 through 22. And behold, a woman with disease and issue of blood came behind him and touched them of his garment. She said to himself, if I touch his garment, I'll be whole. Jesus turned about and saw her and said, daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. You notice how long she had this, 12 years. We don't know if she was married or not, but she was her husband. Couldn't wait 12 years practically, you know, for the, mo for the most men. Uh, Don't be married as their second wife, divorced her. Maybe she didn't have a husband. We don't know, but, but, but she did. You know, it's, it's, it, she couldn't go into the temple for 12 years. And she had all these other issues about where she sat and all this stuff. And they kind of had to separate herself from society for 12 years. Now, the hem, there is some of the kanafs, the corners, the wings of his garment. And she believed this because she believed what was written in Micah about Messiah. There was healing in his wings and his kanaf. And that's where the, that's where the tzitzit is tied. That has the, that has the sky blue thread, the, the telek, sky blue thread. That represents Messiah. So she's acknowledging he's Messiah by doing this. Because it's Messiah that would be healing in his kanaf, in his wings. And she's made whole. Now she's made whole physically only. For her to go back in the temple, she has to go through all these things we just saw. So be, and it's not that different from us. When we're healed, God may heal us of a physical ailment. But it doesn't mean we've got everything made right with God. We sometimes still do other things to get things right. He heals us to give us an opportunity so we can come back, perhaps, you know, huh? So we can, so giving us a second chance to do what's right instead of perhaps we did what was wrong before. We brought this on ourselves. Now he's given us a chance to be, to go, remember all these things we saw are pictures of Messiah. Pictures of the death of Messiah. The death of the lamb to cleanse us of sin. And we may be, and he may physically heal us to give us the opportunity to get to get right with him, we get cleansed of our sin, and we best take advantage of it. Now we're gonna look at we're gonna look at we're gonna look at a little more detail on how cleanse on the unclean are cleansed. Why blood? There's blood all over the place here. Blood on birds, blood on blood of lambs, blood of male lambs, blood of, blood of female lambs, you know. Why all this blood? Well, we're going to take a look. Leviticus chapter 17, 10 through 12. Whatsoever man shall be the house of Israel, the strangers of sojourn among you, that eats any mayor of blood, I will set my face against that soul that eats blood, and I will cut him off among his people. For the life of the blood of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar, making atonement for your souls. It is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. I said to the children of Israel, no soul of yours shall eat blood. Any stranger that soldiers among you shall among you eat blood. God takes blood very seriously. I mean, the family of reading its death, and we'll look at we'll look at that in our next lesson in a little more a little bit more detail. But blood is not to be eaten. Okay, it's one of the, it's one of the things that the Gentiles are told. Right up front, you cannot do. It doesn't mean this is same with blood. It doesn't mean just shedding blood. It means staying from eating it as well. And later, there's people that eat in Mexico, south of the U.S. They eat blood. They eat blood sausage. There's people in England, in, in Europe, who eat blood pudding. You know, and people and there's people that drink mixed blood with milk. Okay, and whatever. These are. God says, if you do these things, repent, because God says he will set his face against you. This is why it was listed with the Gentiles as one of the necessary things they had to do, was not eat blood. 
you are make you blood. You're making your God. You are you are provoking God and asking for trouble. Okay. Why is he taking this blood so serious? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. And it's true. Okay, the Hebrew word for life is also used of oxygen, and oxygen is life. And this is where the Hebrew. And this is where you know this is written 3,500 years or so before. People have realized that there was oxygen, and it was in the blood, and it's what made things live. And it's true. If you cut off someone's oxygen supply, it runs the, the blood no longer carries oxygen, and the body dies. If you, if you cut them badly and they bleed out, oxygen, whatever part the blood's not flow is cut off from, dies, or it's their whole body or a hand or whatever. Life is in the Oxygen or life is in of the flesh. The life of the flesh is from the oxygen. It's in the blood. And, the, and, that, that, and that blood has, has a particular purpose. Because it's in there, it's to make an atonement for us. For our souls. It's life for life. The wages of sin is death. And we brought death upon ourselves. We brought we earned death. Notice it's the wages of sin is death. We've earned it. God's not being mean. He's given us what we what we he's given us what we he's rewarding us what we earned. His mercy is give, is gonna is let Messiah die on our behalf. His life for ours, so that we so his life can make his blood. His life, his, when his blood poured out, his life poured out, and he died on that cross, on that wood of cedar, on, on, that, on, that, on, that point, on that board of cedar, he died on our behalf to make an atonement for us. And this is why John said this is why Yeshua Jesus says what he says in John chapter in John chapter 6, 53 to 58. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of man, drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh drinks my blood has eternal life. I'll raise him up for that day. For my flesh, my my blood, my flesh is, is, is meat or mean food, indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh, drinks my blood, dwells in me, and I in him. As the living fire sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eats me shall live by me. This is the bread, bread which came down from heaven. Not as far as the man are dead, he eats of this bread shall live forever. But when he told this, people well, out, you got to understand, they're not understanding. He, they said, well, like, how can we eat him and, you know, eat this man? You know, see, they thought he was endorsing cannibalism. We're, we're necessarily, you're necessarily not drink blood, certainly, but the devil would apply to human blood, you know, huh? What's he talking about? He's talking about when, it, when you kill an animal and it dies and you consume it, it's now inside you. It becomes part of you. We also have to have Yeshua in us and become part of us. It's just it, we don't just invite him in our lot into our lives. We are asking him to take over completely, okay? So that we're in him and he's in us. Just like he was in the fire, the fire was in him. And drinking his blood speaks of speaks speaks of communion, speaks of the benef, uh, us gaining the benefit of his death, okay? So we're going to look and see that all these things we've looked at, this cleansing of uncleanness, all tell us, foreshadow and tell us about the real cleaning of cleanse of uncleanness that came from Messiah. And this is in, or, and this is spe this is spelled out for us here in First John, chapter one, verses six through ten. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But we walk in the light as he in the light. We have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from all sin. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins, the cleanses of all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. His word is not in us. Okay, remember, John's not writing to unbelievers. He's writing to believers. That's important for you to remember here, okay? If we believers say we have fellowship with him, but we keep walking in darkness, doing the things that we know not to do. Remember, he came to be a light to the Gentiles. And the glory of the people of Israel. And, 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 do, and how we walk in darkness? By not doing the truth. We know the truth, but we're not putting it into practice. We, 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 we are hearers only and not doers. We're like the foolish man, the man who built his house on the sand. Who, the, who built his house on the sands of the rock. The one who heard but didn't put into practice what he heard. Okay. And if we do that, if we do not do what he says, we do not have fellowship with him. We are, we are walking in darkness and we are lying by saying we are his follower. Those who are his follower does what he says, tells, tells them to do. When we walk in the light, we have, as he is in the light, we are to, walk, we are to do what he tells us to do. And he shows us the way. He's in the light. He shows us how to obey God's commandments the way God intended. And if we do that, then we have fellowship with one another. And his blood cleanses us from all sin. Notice it's a continual ongoing thing. The truth is, it, you're, you're like someone who was in a boat that was sinking and, 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 and there's a stormy sea. And someone comes along with, a, with, a, with another boat and, tell, and tells you to get in and they're going to get you out of the stormy sea and they're going to get you safely to shore. Now, you are safe from going down with a ship when you got another boat. But you're not safe from drowning until you reach the other shore. You have to stay in the boat that's taking you to the other shore and out of the stormy sea. So you were saved. You're being saved, and when you arrive on the shore, you will be saved. It's the same way with us. We have to have our sins cleansed. And look, if we do, if we say we never deceived, never sinned at all, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But also, if we have done like Peter, like Peter when he, like when he denied Yeshua three times, if we have if we have sinned afterwards and say we haven't sinned, refuse to admit we sinned, we're liars. We're deceiving ourselves and we're not walking in the we're not living the truth. So what do we do if we do that? We need to confess our sins. And again, remember, John's writing to believers here. And he is just and he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. And the cleanse for all unrighteous. Just like we fell off that boat, like somehow we got off the boat to send us to shore and we yell for help he throws a life jacket a, a life preserver and bring us back in but if we say if we do nothing and say oh i'm fine i'll just swim it from here or whatever we're gonna drown okay so we need to be faithful so he is faithful and just and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness because remember Leprosy and all these things we talk about this uncleanness is talking about a, another uncleanness, the uncleanness of unrighteousness, the uncleanness of sin. And we have to be clean from it. And it's not like we saw, I mean, we saw an example with the leper. Went through it twice. If we sin, if we sin again, we need to confess it and, and, and ask for forgiveness again. And again, Yeshua told Peter 70 times 7. The important thing is you admit you sin and you get back up and you make your best effort and you will overcome it eventually. But if you start trying to justify yourself and like, ah, oh, no, no, that was okay. Uh, you don't know what they did to me and blah, blah, blah. Then what? You're saying, well, I didn't sin. You make him a liar and his word is not in you. 
So don't make, so don't despise the blood that was poured on the cross, on the wood, on the wood of cedar, that scarlet, that bitter hyssop that he ate, that, that he can, that he ate, that bitter cup he drank on Calvary. Be cleansed of your uncleanness. As often as it takes. Until next week, shalom.